So continuing on with chapter four, uh, what we want to do now is think a little bit more about how the central bank actually increases and decreases the money supply in order to uh, change the interest rate uh, in the economy. And to be clear, what they actually target is called the federal funds rate, which is the interest rate at which banks lend reserves to each other. And it's kind of like a, a base interest rate in the economy because it's short term and it's low risk. And so the idea is when the federal funds rate falls, other interest rates will fall as well, although they will tend to be uh, higher. And then when the in federal funds rate increases, other interest rates will increase as well. So in order to understand how the central bank does that, we need to understand a little bit more uh, about the basics of banking and central banking um, in general. So in order to do this, we want to think about um, what, are, what are called open market operations. And open market operations just means that the central bank is buying and selling bonds, treasury bills and treasury bonds, usually treasury bills, but treasury bonds as well, um, with a group of banks via an auction process. And so the idea is that what they're doing when they're buying bonds, they're taking bonds away from the banks and they're paying for them with reserves. And those reserves are then uh, allow banks to make more loans and increase the money supply. Um, when they sell bonds, they're putting more bonds into uh, the bank's asset sheets and they're taking out uh, reserves. And so now banks have, can make fewer loans and the money supply decreases. So we call it expansionary open market operations when they're trying to expand the supply of money by buying bonds and contractionary open market policy or open market operation when the central bank is trying to contract or reduce the money supply uh, by selling bonds. So let's think about how this works. So this is um, the, the balance sheet of, of the central bank. So they have uh, bonds as their assets and liabilities uh, are there is the money, the currency and specifically the, the reserves that banks hold. So basically the Federal Reserve regional banks serve as the bank for banks. And instead of having checking accounts and savings accounts in their banks, uh, they have reserves. Um, and so if they are trying to expand the money supply, what they're going to do is they're going to buy bonds and the banks have these bonds on their balance sheets as well, right? They own these bonds. And so the banks sell them, the uh, Federal Reserve pays for them with extra reserves. Um, and then that increases both the assets and the liabilities uh, for the central bank. The bonds go up by a million dollars, uh, the reserves go up by a million dollars. And this is when, when we talk about the Federal Reserve being able to print money, they don't actually print the actual currency, that, that happens elsewhere, but they are able to create these reserves out of nothing. Um, and so they are able to increase the money supply uh, out of nothing, basically. Um, one other thing to know about bonds is the relationship between bond prices and interest rates. Um, it said, you know, the stock market is complicated, but compared to the bond market, it's, it's much simpler. Um, one, you know, aspect of uh, the bond market is sort of understanding the price. This is a very simple model because there are actually different types of bonds um, and therefore different ways to calculate prices and interest rates. Um, but for, you know, a regular bond that's going to pay, say, $100 a year from now, right, and won't pay any sort of so-called coupon payments, which you might get, say, every quarter, um, then if you pay, say, $95 as the price of the bond, then the interest rate is 100, that's what you get in a year, minus 95, that's what you pay now, divided by 95. So it would be five divided by 95 or you know a little bit more than 5% in this case. One thing just to keep in mind is that when the price and the interest rate move, they move in opposite directions. So when the price of the bond is high, the interest rate is low. When the interest rate is uh, high, the price of the bond is low. So when you hear that the bond market prices are increasing, that means actually that the interest rates are going down. So 
the central bank actually doesn't really choose the money supply, right? We said they choose the money supply, but we said actually what they're doing is choosing a point along the money demand curve. And we could have said that they chose the interest rate. And this is actually what they do um, in, in these, uh, these days, right? They used to give both a sort of money supply target and an interest rate target. Um, and then they realized it's a lot easier to measure the interest rate than the money supply. And what they really care about is the interest rate because the interest rate is the price in the market um, that's equilibrating money supply and money demand, but it's also the price in the market that's going to be important for real capital investment, uh, which is the link between the money market, the financial market, and the goods and services market. So usually the Fed actually just announces a, a target interest rate for the federal funds rate um, as we said, you know, in an earlier chapter, right now it's basically zero, um, which causes some problems, which we'll talk about. Um, but in, you know, a healthy economy, it could be anywhere from two to six percent. Um, and, you know, as the economy recovers from the current COVID-19 pandemic, uh, eventually we would expect the Fed to start raising uh, the target federal funds rate. So it's important to understand that the, the Fed doesn't increase the money supply by itself, right? Banks are really important in terms of uh, actually increasing the money supply. And they do this because they serve as financial intermediaries between people who want to save, right? These are the depositors that have checking accounts and savings accounts and money market accounts and certificates of deposit and borrowers who want to borrow money in order to buy things. And so that could be anything from, you know, mortgage loans to car loans, to credit card loans, to business loans, etc. And the way that they do that is that they take their deposits and they keep some of it as reserves, right? Um, a little bit of it will be in their, their vault to satisfy cash needs, but most of it will be in their account at the regional Federal Reserve Bank and they have a certain amount of reserves that they have to keep. Usually it's around 10% in the United States um, and they're able to lend out the rest. And they have an incentive to lend out as much as they can because the way they make a profit is by uh, having a higher interest rate on their loans than they pay on their deposits. So if their loans are bringing in you know, 6% on average and their deposits are paying 1% on average, then that 5% difference is the way they're making a profit. Um, so when they have more reserves, they're able to make more loans and make more profits. So they want to do that. When they have fewer reserves, they have to make fewer loans. Um, and so that's how the money supply can increase and decrease based on what the central bank does in terms of reserves. And so the liabilities of the central bank are, are the money that it has issue, right? That's the that's central bank money, sometimes called high powered money. As we'll see, we're going to use an H in order to model that. Um, so if we think about both the central bank and regular banks, regular commercial banks like Bank of America or Citibank or JP Morgan Chase, um, the central bank, as we said, has bonds as their assets, usually treasury bills, but they have also have treasury bonds, which are just longer term treasury um, notes. And they even have mortgage backed securities now after the financial crisis. Uh, and then they have as their liabilities, the reserves uh, and plus the currency that's out there. A regular bank, their liabilities are checkable deposits. I mean, also savings accounts and things like that, but we're just going to focus on the checkable deposits for now. And their assets are the reserves they have, the loans that they've made, and the bonds that they own, right? And so those bonds are going to be important because that's what the central bank buys and sells in order to increase and decrease the reserves that the banks have. 